morning guys. Well, I have made a little bit of progress on my DJI My Fly Dream Trekker setup. Now, as a quick recap, essentially, this project started at a point where I was having endless issues, primarily with this airframe, which um, basically came down to be an antenna related issue, which was stopping me getting any range. But um, what, what I did out of this is I started putting together and hatching a plan to try and improve things by using an antenna tracker. And quite simply, I love antenna trackers. I've got sitting down over there, one, two, I've got four of them from RSSI through to GPS, through to Arcbird, you name them. I've got lots of trackers. I like them. And um, the natural affinity seemed to me, well, let's see what we can achieve by putting a tracker onto the DJI system. Now, the problem, of course, is that the DJI system does have a natural range limitation. It, I, I think it's about four and a half to five miles off the top of my head. I might be wrong. There seems to be lots of figures bouncing around on the internet. So quite what the end one is, I don't know. But essentially, you do get a limitation to how far you can go. So the big clarification is, my interest is not actually about trying to go far with this, but rather about improving object penetration. Um, and along came the idea of a tracker. Now, to all intents, and I would 100% agree here, you don't actually need a tracker to do this. You could very easily just bang on. Where are they? I've got some here. Oh, some of these style antennas, which I've got one sitting on top of um, some dominators here. And true RC cells, easy plug them to the front of the goggle and off you go. You can see half a million miles away. Um, the downside of this is you've got to kind of turn your head around in order to actually track the aircraft. Um, or of course, you just got to turn around and fly in one direction. Now, what, what, one of the issues that occurs with this from my experience is say you have a beam which is sitting at about 60 degrees wide. It gets wider and wider the further you are. Out, go away from you and that's that's utterly brilliant the problem is is within a short to medium range flying it's actually quite easy to fly out of that beam and you know I, I've sat down with um, ground stations before that I use which the antenna reports to have a 160 degree wide beam and quite simply there's a sweet spot in the middle and you notice this you fly out by the time you 500 meters that way you realize that actually if I don't turn my antenna I don't improve things. It's as simple as that because despite the fact that the beam is as wide as a million miles apparently, you know, 180 degrees and you should be able to get everywhere, the actual hot zone is still only 60 degrees in the middle. So there is something to be said for keeping yourself bang in the center of that beam. And that is where this comes on board because with the tracker, you're always bang in the middle of the beam. Now, unfortunately, due to circumstances, what happened a few weeks back is I tried to test it on both this airframe and also on a Talon, and I just had endless, endless problems. I was getting just no end of issues. So I ended up having to go back to square one. The good news is it wasn't with the tracker. Um, the tracker was working, but it turns out that a lot of my issues in all of my testing were based around the fact that this airframe, basically iFlight just had given the wrong pigtails and the antennas weren't matched. So that caused huge problems. But what a difference there is now. So first off, I can report that I now actually get half decent range with this quad, which is good. And I have also achieved in my first tests of the tracker, good object penetration. Now, the easiest way is if I actually just show you a video that I have got here. And let me load this up for you. There we go. Okay, and as you can see, on the left-hand side, I have the footage from the tracker. And on the right-hand side, I have the footage from the goggles using two Omni. So it was two independent flights that I've tried to match up as best as I can. And what you're actually looking here is for the difference in bitrate and delay that is coming through it. There is no doubt you can see that the tracker is holding a much higher bitrate for far more of the flight 
than just the goggles alone. Now, this is not actually unexpected. It's, you know, you're putting better antennas on. End of story. Better antennas pointing at the aircraft. It's going to penetrate through all the foliage and the scrub and everything else that you get there. What, what the benefit for me in this here is that actually suddenly I don't have to worry about where the aircraft is. Let me start this again so we can talk through it. Okay, and as you can see again, you know, what, one of the things I actually wanted to draw your attention to is to look at the video on the right hand side and pay attention to how it speeds up every now and again and reduces it. That, that speed actually occurs, in fact the one just happened there, when there's serious lag. And the serious lag is a direct result of the signal being so rubbish that it's almost unflyable. And, and unfortunately the goggle recording doesn't quite capture this, but um, there, there was lag sufficient enough in this video that I've had to increase the speed of the videos by about a factor of 1.2% just to get them to tie together speed wise whilst I was doing the same flight. And the result of that is actually dropped frames. So you get this kind of, it, when, when you're flying, if you get that sort of level of packet loss, it kind of just, it feels like you've hit jello. It kind of, it just grinds. <laughs> and to be honest, you're at high risk at that point of crashing because you're kind of out of the realms of flying. Now, the point of all of this is that when I was using the tracker, I was able to get better object penetration because of the antennas being directly in the hotspot tracking the airframe regardless of where I was. And there was a vast improvement. So in terms of a yes, is it working? Spot on. It's doing exactly as it should do. This has just opened up the realms of where I could possibly fly. Will it give me more range when I fly a long way? Well, probably. I would be surprised if it didn't, you know, that that will come next when I plug this all onto a wing and start heading out a little bit further. You know, the reality is there's been tests already with people and they've gone their five kilometers, whatever. You know, we know it will do that. I'm interested, can I do my five kilometers and go behind some rubbish when I'm two kilometers out and not stress so much because the antennas pointing at the aircraft will just give me that five to ten percent margin. And that's where it comes down to for me. Um, if it enables me to do that, fantastic. Um, and then I'm happy carting this around because the truth is this is not a very big object to carry along to the field. You know, I'm, I'm used to carrying big aircraft. This is not a problem. Um, for some it is, if you don't like it, well, that's your prerogative, not my problem. <laughs> but um, yeah, so there we go. First off, there's a little bit of um, progress on this. I'm very happy with the results so far and more testing will be required over the next couple of weeks on different aircraft and pushing things out where I can worry a little bit less about fail safes and all these sort of things where I don't have to walk too far. We'll see what happens. <laughs> but all going well, I will give you an update in a couple of weeks on a wing showing things just being fantastic. And well, who knows? Maybe we won't. We'll see what happens. I don't know. The, the future is yet to be found. <laughs> Cheers, guys. Enjoy.